I'm seeing so many people <coughs> sending in their comments as we continue. I'm seeing here at uh, Kevin and I'm watching you live from Kakamega County, uh, enjoying the show. I'm seeing a comment here by uh, this is uh, Patricia saying I mean, she's enjoying the show, loving the discussion, very candid. Uh, with the uh, Honorable Law Court. Thank you very much for your comments. Remember to give us your thoughts even as you continue with this conversation tonight. The hashtag is the stand K E at Y254 channel at Ramaguko at EO Court. Uh, remember to also give us your take in regards to the, what we are asking today. What is the Kenya? we need mm -hmm. what is the kenya that you need give us your take remember mm -hmm. i'm with honorable ekuru okot uh, tonight right here on y254 moshimiwa by the by the ram eh? Eh. No, not to undermine myself eh? yeah i think one of the things that we need to change we need to change the lingua here yeah, you know okay. when, when you keep on calling <laughs> calling people honorable you know uh, you know that thing goes into people's minds and yeah. this is why leadership in this country is failing you you because think we, like we need to revoke Mwishimiwa. that name we, we, need, we need to call people even by their own names and by their titles. Uh, this, this title, Honorable, mm. I've seen this title, Honorable, really creating big-headed leadership that actually <laughs> does not <laughs> serve the people. Because I can see people being preoccupied with the title, Honorable. <gasps> Looking for that title. Uh, and yet you can actually, you try to find out what, uh, what Honorable thing have these people done. As long as you vowed for okay, a political the, seat, you're called in the, honorable. In the, in the history of parliamentary democracy, mm. you can only be addressed as honorable actually on the floor of parliament. Okay. That is. And outside the floor? We call you by your name. Dr. Ukot. I'm happy. <laughs> that's, that's what I struggled for. <laughs> that's what you struggled for. I'm not for. elected. I don't know why people will call me honorable when I'm not elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah? A professor. <laughs> no, I'm not a professor yet. So maybe one day, one time. <laughs> one day, one time. One day, one time. You should have said amen. Mm? You should have said amen. It will happen. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very optimistic person. <laughs> Let me quote uh, Moshi. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, you, you put that thing in my head, Moshi. <laughs> <laughs> Let me quote Professor Pielo Lumumba. Yes. He a good, said... A good man. A good man. Very yeah. intelligent. He taught me law. It taught uh. me criminal procedure. I met him once. Mm -hmm. He inspired me. Right. He said that I have seen it in the first BBI report mm -hmm. that there are plans to expand the executive to create space for ethnic representation. Mm -hmm. That should not guide our discussion. The constitutional change should only be for the benefit of our posterity. Absolutely. You agree I with couldn't that? agree no more with prof, my good prof, uh, friend uh, Lumumba. Mm. First of all, remember, Professor Lumumba was actually the secretary of the CKRC, yeah. the Constitution of Kenya Review Commission, uh, that led us to a referendum in 2005. So he participated actively in the in constitution making process, the process, and I know he speaks a lot in, uh, in about governance in, in, in many parts of Africa and internationally. So he means what he's saying. And, mm. and, and I, I concur with him absolutely. But constitutional but change should not be about benefiting individuals. It's about the prosperity of a country and its people. But then how best can you ensure representation under this constitution? <clears throat> Let me tell you, Ram, eh? and this is, if your program is about really being brutally honest, mm. we are overrepresented in this country. Then give us let, your stand. Let me give you an, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Do you think today a Kuru court can actually go to Siaya or Kisumu, mm. run for governor and be elected as a governor. Oh, why not? It's we have. The, it, we is, it is the ideal situation. We have soon a East Member of Parliament. It, it is the ideal situation. Uh -huh. Yeah? But chances are very high. Aluo will be elected. A Turkana will be elected in Turkana. A Somali will be elected in Mandera, in Wajir, in, uh, in, in Garissa. You know, I'm Taita. I'm Taita Taveta will be elected in Taita Taveta. You know, Vice. I mean, the, you know the story. Uh, Anandi will be elected in, 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 in Nandi County or in, in Bomet. Kipsigis will be elected in Bomet, in Kericho. I would, that, like, to, I, that is, I would like to give you an example. No, that, that is how. No, no, forget about that. Uh, you know, mm. I, I, I know you want to talk about Junet, but we'll talk about that. Junet, uh, even in Kisumu East, yes. member of parliament. Yes. Yeah. But you see, they have to suck up to a certain leader to be elected. And that's the reality. Junet even said, he, he, I'm, I'm somebody's cow. He sees actually to be uh, a representative of the people of uh, Suna. Is it Suna West? Or Suna East. Suna East. Mm. He said it himself. When we are here, me, Sisi Ningombe Araila, we are cows. So because he is owned, he is imposed on people. 
So I hope he, he's not elected because, I don't know, I hope he's elected because he actually stands for something. But when a leader comes and says that uh, I am a cow, mm. I follow so and so, whichever way they tell me, then I, you wonder whether that it is... It makes you question their stand. Yeah, exactly. So, but, what I'm telling you is this. Mm. Kenya today is overrepresented. We don't need ethnic representation in amending the constitution of Kenya. Mm. Because, look at the 47 counties of Kenya. Predominantly, in Kiambu, it will be a miracle not to elect a Kikuyu. In Muranga, in Kirinyaga, in Nyeri, it will be a miracle not to elect a Meru in Meru County. I mean, I am optimistic. I mm. wish there will be a time in Kenya when the character of our politics will be such that you can actually elect a Turkana as a governor in Kirinyaga. Such that a, a, a man from Kapedo can vie exactly. anyway, here in Nairobi. And people can listen to me and say, I think he has good ideas, let's elect him. But the real politic is mm. that this is not the situation in Kenya. It's different. So to that extent, we are ethnically represented. Let's go to the members of parliament. Again, there's an ethnic representation there. Let's go to senators. Again, an ethnic representation. Members of the county assembly. Again, ethnic representation. As a matter of fact, we need to reduce this narrative talk about ethnicity mm -hmm. and gravitate ourselves towards talking how to build a nation state. Today in Kenya Ram, we are actually not even a nation. What are we? We are a conglomeration of ethnic identities that <laughs> pretends to be a nation. <laughs> we are an assembly of tribes. And that's why you can see our politics is so ethnic, is so tribal, our mutuetu. You know, when, 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 when... Why, why, why are you downgrading the opposition, Moshibi? Uh, which, opposi uh, which, which, which opposition? A conglomeration of ethnic what? Uh, identities. That's what we are. We are just an assembly of tribes. And look, predominant in our discussion today mm -hmm. is the idea of Mutuetu, our tribe, that our person has to be in, 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 in status. Let's be brutally honest. Okay. 2017. Mm. Let's talk about the real politic in Kenya. Uru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga. Mm. Okay? You were there? Yes, I was there. But in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the people who uh, spoke, I mean, galvanized their, their, their tribal uh, regions and their tribes, mm. you can clearly say, and I'm a realist here, that mm. Uru Kenyatta went to the Kikui people, and what did he say? He told them uh, that Kimondo kimo, kimo Mugoroki, yeah, in Kikui mm. meaning that mad person, yeah? And he told them, you know, Udamakiniwito, Udamakinishiao, that leadership is ours, but the fish is theirs. But now that, was, Raila, that, that, that narrative wait. was changed. No, it never changed. Wait. And that's what the pretense I want to talk, tell you about. Raila, on the other hand, was a busy muru, saying, oh, eh, the river Mulevi, conduct a mizi. You know, that was what he was saying. You know, but what happened in 2018? They came together. So the people, the majority, coming together the there base, by changing the, the narrative. Base, the, their base are now disillusioned. And that's why I'm saying politics of ethnicity in this country does not help the common monarchy. It only helps an elite political class who whip the emotions of their tribes or the regions they come from for them to occupy certain positions for their own common interest. I can also give you another example. Look at the choreography around 2022. It's not about Kenya. It's not about the people of Kenya. It is about the preservation of personal interests of certain individuals. It's not about Kenya. It's not about you and I. Mm. There is no single Kenyan today that will feed on tribal politics. If honestly you're not able to mm. earn a living, and, and let's even learn from the example of COVID-19. Today in COVID-19, how come we don't run to our tribe and say, because in 2017 I was crazy, you know, fighting for my tribe or my tribal person, um, person from my tribe to occupy a certain position, let my person now help me out with COVID-19. Because right now the virus doesn't know tribe. Does it know tribe? If you don't have a medical cover, in fact, even now having a medical cover is almost useless because medical insurances have conspired, uh, you know, to say that, you know, COVID-19 is not covered. So politics i mean tribal politics is actually idiocy at its very best and let's be just be honest about it there's a level of mediocrity in this country mm. that you think that if if our own that mm. if our own mm. 
is, is, is occupy a certain public position, then I also benefit. Today, how many Kikuyus can say they are benefiting because Uhuru Muige Kenyatta from the commu Kikuyu community is, is, is the president? The, how, many, the, how, many, how many Luos today benefit because Raila Amolo Odinga has finally shook hands with Uhuru Kenyatta and mm -hmm. therefore we also benefit? How many, how many Turkana people today will benefit because the Kuru Court, I don't know, is occupying a certain, or occupy a certain position? This, this nonsense has to stop. And I think Kenyans, we really need to have a candid conversation <laughs> about the, ourselves. And, the, this is, and this is, for me, the Kenya that I really want. Uh -huh. The Kenya where tribe is not the defining, you know, the defining denominator. Uh -huh. Of any political leader. Of any political Vibe leader. for any seat. Yes. It is, thank God, I wish we could actually celebrate our identity. Because the way I see tribe, I see tribe, tribe, tribes posi I mean many tribes in Kenya positively mm. I ask myself knowing Kenya right now is Kenya Kenya without say Kikuyus, Turkanas, the Boni, the Malakote, the Sengwer, we the all Tugen, make Kenya, the Nandi, the Kalenjin, the Luya would you say that is Kenya without any of those tribes? No. My Kenya that I want is one where I celebrate diversity this now, now. diversity in identity. And we, if we can celebrate uh, our different cultures and that unity, that for me is how we can say we have a nation state we call Kenya that we are all proud to belong to. In as much as yes, we are talking about um, uh, uh, these issues of constitution, shouldn't we also be addressing integrity of elections? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, even though we address at the same time how to change the constitution to, accom to accommodate. Absolutely. And what is your issue about the integrity of elections? The debate has been there in regards to the, you know, election integrity. Um, uh, you know, the IBC has been put into question. Your party also put IBC into question. You know, let me tell you. First of all, let, for the avoidance of doubt, yes, I will defend IBC as currently constituted mm -hmm. because I've looked at the history of electoral management bodies in this country since 1997. Mm -hmm. At every election, election, election year, Ram, 1997. 2002, 2007, 2013, 2017, now going towards 2022, we have always had a different IEBC. Why? Because there are individuals in this country who have a sense, a false sense of entitlement. Yeah. That if they don't have the kind, of, the kind of IEBC that favors them, then the election lacks integrity. And I say, let me give you an example. And that narrative is always advanced by people who fail to capture the presidency. That is the common denominator. Or by people who have captured the presidency but do not now want to trust this referee. How come then, Ram, that the integrity of IEBC is not questioned mm. by those people who are declared as winners by IEBC? For example... I remember you, you, you've given that narrative. Yes. That, 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 that. Let's, let's be brutally honest here. <laughs> How come we are not seeing <laughs> a mass resignation of those elected. senators, MPs, governors, MCAs, women rep, who were declared as winners by IEBC. But because a certain group did not capture, say, the presidency or form the government, mm. they want to change IEBC. The youths are also this crying. Is, this is, this the, the, is, the, the, the youths are also crying that they are is, not getting political seats. This is hypocrisy. Forget it. We'll come to the youth. This is hypocrisy of the highest order. You know? For example, I mean, you want us to be honest here in your show. Yeah. There are people who have called for the disbandment of IEBC. But today as we speak, they are actually in bed with the government that was declared as a winner by IEBC. Why then will you legitimize a government declared or formed by a person who was declared a winner by ABC. So in, integrity in, court. In other words, you're saying that we have double standards when it comes to these issues. Absolutely. We have double standard. We are selfish leaders who that if it is not them who drive a certain political narrative in this country, then that narrative is not worth it. What about and, the and, youth? And, 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 and I asked Mishimi, what about uh, the youth? Uh, uh, How uh, can we also ensure that the youth also have a, uh, you know, a piece of the cake? You know, let me tell you, the youth in this country should stop lamenting and being curious onlookers saying that we are being marginalized 
I have challenged many youth groups that I speak to. Mm. Please spare me this talk about we are the majority, we want the cake. If mm. you are the majority, use your numbers. What has stopped you with your majority from forming the next government? From even electing the kind of president that you want? From even electing a youthful president? What has stopped you? The same question can be asked of women. Because I've had this narrative that youth and women are the majority in Kenya. Mm. But yet, we are the ones who line up in political rallies, throw stones at each other because of grey-haired fellows. You, you were even against the women representative seat. I wasn't Why against. You? Why you, were you in your proposal? Actually, I wasn't against. I was, uh, I was first of all, um, from 2010, I was in the team that actually fought so hard to create those positions because mm. we wanted to give the women of Kenya a political voice to champion certain aspects common to them or of interest to them. For example, even an issue to do with the reproductive health right. I would have expected women, of the 47 voices in, in, of, of women can elected together with the nominated to stand on one particular issue. But over time, we've mm. seen that those women representatives have actually failed even the gender, the gender debate. They are, have not seen them stand up in parliament and say, Mr. President Uhuru Kenyatta, you brought us a list of cabinet secretaries, PSS, ambassadors, that has not met the third gender rule as prescribed in the constitution. I will have seen that, I will have expected that protest. Mm -hmm. I have not seen it. And when we went to Kenyans, and Kenyans told us, we, it's time for us to punguza Mizigo, Kenya. Mm -hmm. They said, one of the Mizigo we have to punguza is this women right because we don't see the value of it. Was it in your document as Pungza Mizigo? Yes, and that's why for me I modified it to say mm -hmm. we cannot uh, ignore the voices of women. In reducing representation, which mm -hmm. Kenyans agreed, let's elect one man and one woman. I was actually helping the gender discourse, actually advancing it further by saying, now we want representation between men and women to be at 50-50. Women of Kenya don't have to beg. And I also do not want them to wear the tag women representative. Mm. I wanted them to come from the counties as elected members of parliament. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why we said one man, one woman. And that is the equality, the equity we are looking for. So I wasn't undermining women representative. Mm. We are just saying the current women representative are not doing their job as envisioned by the authors of this constitution or by the people of Kenya. But instead, I wanted to put them at par with men in the National Assembly and in Senate. Now, let's, let, let's over to the Senate mm -hmm. that you've mentioned there. Right. One of the major roles of the Senate is to protect the interests of counties. Of counties. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they have managed this to, no. to, to fulfill this mandate so far? Actually, the Senate is a failed institution as we speak. Even right now, the statement with, with regard to the revenue, uh, the f sharing uh, the formula, mm. is, is a failure. I don't understand why 12 people whose mandate in the constitution is to protect the interests of the counties cannot agree to actually on a formula that will benefit the county. Their first client mm. is the county. But, but look at what's happening to the Senate of Kenya today. It is apparent, clear, apparently clear that they are being controlled by the executive. And that's why before this formula became an issue, you saw parliamentary group meetings mm -hmm. organized by the two main, uh, you know, two, two main, or the former two main protagonists by now brothers in politics to bring changes to the political leadership. They actually, they, I mean, to the Senate, they actually just, they've lacked independence of thought. I've seen some of the members of parliament, but I also have hope because I've seen some fairly young uh, senators People like Nasakaja uh, and the rest standing mm. up and saying, no, we cannot uh, right this wrong. Mm. So, whereas there are good elements within the Constitution, I mean, the, the, the Senate there, but overall, Senate, in my view, has actually failed. And which is, when, why, when, and which is why, when we went to the people of Kenya in terms of, uh, through Article 257, mm. the popular initiative, and we asked them, what will you expect, what, what changes would you expect so that to make this Constitution more effective? Mm. You know what they told us in one voice? Abolish, I, I, I read your report. Abolish, you saying abo abolish, abolish the Senate. Senate. Abolish Senate. Because Kenyans now are asking hard question. What is the value of representation? And they you, still want representation, but qualitative representation. In, in, in your initial 
punguza mizigo yeah. right now we have punguza mizigo, mizigo kenya mm -hmm. in, in the initial uh, document we had you saying that the senate should be made the upper house, upper house yes. and be given veto powers exactly but right now mm -hmm. it is that the senate but should reduced yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but reduce, reduce in terms of in representation terms of numbers, numbers. numbers. Yeah. but right now you're saying that the, the senate should be abolished what is yes. the difference what what made the change of so, heart so, from the initial to yes. the current so initially i i am a strong believer that uh, you know i'm a strong believer of checks and balances mm -hmm. uh, and checks and balances can be acquired in in various aspects for example since we have adopted the idea of a bicameral house yes you know hapa and uh, i mean uh, two houses in our current constitution, it is not clear whether one house which is upper than the other. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's not able to check on the exigencies of another, another house. In the initial proposal, I, I push for the proposal that let's have Senate, but with a reduced membership of just mm -hmm. only 47. Yeah. Only 47. No nomination, no nothing. But let it be a upper house, as it is in many democracies of the world. Actually, ours is a laughable democracy because we, 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 wrote, we gave ourselves this constitution, I mean, uh, these two houses, but mm. we never distinguished which one can actually veto the powers mm. of the other. We, so we, which again takes us back to, again to the discussion on constitutional exactly. amendments. Exactly. So, yes. uh -huh. so our initial proposal, which for me I favor, mm. is to maintain a bicameral house, okay. but give it veto power and let it be a half house that can actually check the excesses of the lower house but but the that's not, but that's not the current position that's not the current position mm. so when i took the punguza mizigo bill or when we took the punguza mizigo bill to at least 29 county assemblies that mm. we visited and pre presented the views mm. they gave us feedback mm. i mean as true democrats we said okay this is good useful feedback yeah uh, and of course we balanced interest mm. it's not necessarily about what a kuru court wants it's also about what majority of kenyans want Mm. Majority of Kenyans told us, to be honest, if you look at the old ambi ambit of representation, mm. we don't see this Senate as representing us as it was envisioned in the 2010 constitution. So that's why they proposed abolished it. That's why we put that recommendation. It's out there. So again, it's up to Kenyans. You know? Okay, okay. Uh, now, 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 even um, as you continue, because time is not also on our side here, mm -hmm. I'd like you to, to give us a take. Governor uh, Wycliffe Oparanya mm -hmm. um, said this, and I quote, we, expre we express our discontent with Senate's failure to build consensus on the third generation formula, which has consequently delayed the approval of, of the County Allocation of uh, uh, Revenue Act 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what is your what is your stand about the move by the county uh, council of governors when they announced that counties will be shut down, um, you know, um, if there will be no solution by September 17th? You know, people like Oparanya are mm. hypocrites. They they, they 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 pretend they speak for the counties, but of course, again, they are subservient to political manipulation. Last year, mm. when we were proposing Punguza Mizigo and actually bringing more money to the county through a constitutional amendment and not leaving it to the decisions of the senators. It is Oparanya and others who led, came up with something called Ugatusi Initiative. Yes. And Ugatusi Initiative was meant to undermine Punguza Mizigo Kenya that was actually bringing more money to the counties through a concrete amendment, an entrenched amendment to the constitution so that we do not have today mm. to be discussing about this third formula that generation formula uh, you know at the at the, at the, at the mercy of, of senators it is oparanya who opposed a proposal that was coming to benefit the counties so why is he playing double speak now he's playing double speak because that time he was playing politics what politics is the of experience but, but the counties are experiencing a struggle at the moment what uh, you know closure of counties by september 17th yeah, you see, it's unfortunate that if, if, we, if we accept ourselves to go uh, that route, mm. senators, to that extent, I agree with the Senator Oparanya that, yes, Governor, uh, Governor uh, Oparanya, mm. yes, uh, senators are failing because yes. their first client should be the counties, okay? Should be the counties. And therefore, but I also want him to be absolutely honest with himself, mm. not to play doubles, not to play politics of expediency. Mm. He is the deputy party leader of ODM. The, the party leader of ODM mm. has control over his, the members in Senate and National Assembly. 
You know, <laughs> instead of crying, showing uh, this crocodile tears that he's showing, why can't he actually uh, talk to his party leader who can then talk to his political brother, Uru Kenyatta, who now control Senate and National Assembly mm. to make sure that this, this, this decision is arrived at? How come it was so easy, Ram, when they wanted to change the political leadership mm. in Senate? It was a, few, a matter of hours and changes took place. When they wanted to change the, uh, the leadership in National Assembly, it was a matter of hours. What has become so difficult now? In the Senate. Mashimiwa, let's head over to Twitter and okay. find out who I, and, and, and just sample a few uh, tweets here. I'm seeing Simon Anasema, uh, Dr. Okot is so focused. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Joseph Okome, he's saying, tuned in from Makweni County. Dr. Okot is a man of vision, I trust in him. Eriko Tush Anasema, Nico tuned in. Uh, we have Don King Anasema, should, shouldn't it be the Kenya we want? I said the Kenya we need. Which, are, which, which is which? Which one is most strong? Well, okay. I, I think for me, a need is uh, almost like a basic, mm. you know. And I think, um, well, it could be a question of semantics. But I think semantics, we, are talking, eh? we are talking about, uh, well, there is a difference between need and want. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's also about, I think, the desire for a Kenya that uh, everybody is comfortable and everybody is enjoying uh, mm. certain benefits. Today, right. people have said, some of us, maze to Vumilia to Kenya. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm. Someone is saying here, um, a fantas or home. And some, uh, uh, I love the discussion, but in as much as we want to make it enticing, um, using some uh, some examples is not good. Um, uh, Dr. Court, please, uh, there are some words. Uh, so someone is saying that uh, there are some words that you, you used in re reference to a few things that he is he's not agreeing with you. Okay, I don't know which words there. I wish he was very categorical and clear, <laughs> which was there I can defend myself. Yeah. But yeah. I, I take the... I take the but yeah. You take it, huh? Yeah. Mm, I'm seeing here, we have one one more saying, what's the stand on the changing uh, the term limits for governor? Rumor has it that the BBI is, BBI is coming with uh, this. That, that is uh, at Alfred Lagat. <coughs> well, it remains a rumor to me until we see the report. It remains a rumor to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and by the way, we are all waiting for to, to see what people will be saying um, even as you continue waiting. We have, but, uh, um, how come you people are not comparing uh, the Punguza Mizigo proposal, which are concrete and are out there, with this other proposal? You know, it will be useful if you can actually uh, make Kenyans understand. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, see, I'm going to come back to Dr. Kadebe. Come back to Dr. Kadebe. But at least, if there are proposals about amending the constitution, mm. at least help Kenyans understand. Okay, this is what Third Way Alliance Kenya is saying. This is what other people are saying. In fact, I suspect if you are to compare the two proposals, mm. you'll probably see Third Way Alliance Kenya all the 10 areas of proposal. And BBI it will be zero, zero or question one, question mark. Doctor, I want us to, to, to wrap it up. Okay. Final question um, <laughs> before we, we leave studio. Mm -hmm. uh, 2022 is coming. Mm -hmm. Are you vying for presidency? You vied for it in 2017. To be honest with you, eh, mm. I find the discussion around 2022 a little bit premature yes. at this stage. Mm. And I say this because, like I started this show by mm. saying that, what is my stand uh, you know, about the Kenya that I want or the Kenya that I need? Um, I outlined a number of issues to do with, for example, uh, you know, uh, the healthcare infrastructure in this country, mm -hmm. uh, uh, education, yeah. you know, and employment, op op employment opportunities, you know, uh, the fact that people are now being foreclosed by banks, uh, by, 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 by creditors. I wish you could actually focus on the issues that impact on Kenyans today. Uh, 2022, if it comes, and I pray for life, mm. you know, Mm. Um, if 2022 comes, we'll make that decision then. But mm. for now, really, it's for me not about 2022. Mm. It's right now about how do we even reopen this economy? Mm. You know, how mm. do we address the question of unemployment? The challenges that the youth of this country are going, are going through. You know, All the right. problem, the, the reason I shy away from discussing about 2022 mm. is because we keep on pushing Kenyans into just a discussion around elections election without necessarily saying what has been the outcome of an election in addressing the problems of kenyans all right you know Maybe. i wish you could focus on those issues like now uh, ram schools schools are opening do you know there's a big challenge many parents today as we speak are not able to afford school fees Right now, the country is on survival mode. Everybody's on survival mode. I don't know about you, but I think I am on survival mode like many other Kenyans. 
We are actually now beginning to wonder, okay, are we able to afford all our bills and for how long? Those all are right. the kind of discussions that I wish now, we, can, we can actually have right now, now not the, 2022. I, I, I would like you to now, um, th that's fair enough. Mm. In fact, that is progressive. Mm. Now, speaking of progressive, let's speak to the youths mm -hmm. who also need to see that progress. Mm -hmm. Your stand to the youths as you wrap things up. My stand to the youth is this. Please, organize yourself. This country belongs to you in equal measure to those other people who have used you for the longest time. Mm -hmm. The youth of this country needs to organize themselves and actually be on the dining table. Not be on the dining table as dinner, but as diners. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hate okay. to keep on hearing mm -hmm. that we are the leaders of tomorrow. The leaders of tomorrow. This lamentation mm -hmm. about that we are being marginalized, we are being undermined. The youth of Kenya need to stop that discussion mm -hmm. and mobilize themselves and say, okay, what is our interest? Even if we go by the narrative that uh, politics is about interest, mm -hmm. then the youth of Kenya must also now say, what is our interest in this country? If this Good. country is going to be destroyed by corruption, looking at, for example, how people are stealing even COVID money, it's the youth of Kenya who are going to suffer. They will not have a future. You know, for someone like me at my age, I mean, I'm in, in going to my late 40s now, the only thing standing between me and life is death and it can happen anytime. All right. Okay. And, and, and I think the youth of this country need uh. to jealously guard this country. All right. Yeah. Uh. And take care of their daily life, daily struggles, which happens today, not tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Daktari. That is Dr. Ekuru Okot giving us his stand right here on Y254. It has, it has been a pleasure. Wishing you the best. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for inviting me to the show and I look forward to coming back again. Thank you very much. And as always, it has also been a pleasure having you. This brings us to the end of this time today. See you again next week. God bless you. God bless the work of your hands. Have a good night. My name is Ram Aguko. This is The Stand.